In Venezuela, President Nicolas Maduro denounced that Washington carries out destabilizing campaigns for the upcoming 2024 elections. In Palestine, a new Israeli airstrike kills seven workers of the Charity World Central Kitchen after the delivery of food and supplies to North Gaza. In Russia, authorities seized over 27 explosive devices while being transported from Ukraine to Russia via EU member states. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Luis Alberto Matos from the Lesus Studios in Havana, Cuba. We'll begin with the news. In Venezuela, President Nicolas Maduro denounced that Washington carries out destabilizing campaigns for the upcoming 2024 elections. The president's statements were made during his program Con Maduro Mas, from where he urged the United States and the Venezuelan right wing to cease their boycott attempts against the nation. He also condemned the recent forest fires in several regions of the country and accused the destabilizing sectors of promoting a psychological war to create anxiety. In this regard, he ordered the intelligence agencies to increase the levels of surveillance. In 2023, we dismantled five conspiracies, and I give you the scoop. In this year, 2024, we have dismantled four conspiracies all prepared from Miami, financed in Miami by the gringos. All the conspiracies, the five of last year and the four of this year, all five conspiracies were prepared from Colombia by the secret base of the CIA and the FBI with conspiracy of former officials. I have the names. I reserve them for the next few days, but I have the names. Earlier, Venezuela's Attorney General Tarek William Saab denounced that former members of the military linked to the so-called Operation Hedion are organizing a destabilizing movement from the United States and Colombian territories. Saab denounced that the Colombian right-wing media and former presidents Albert Uribe and Ivan Duque collaborated with extremists and anti-Venezuelan sectors. The prosecutor pointed out that this is the ninth action unveiled and investigated by the government, which had its highest point in the so-called White Armband Plan, intended to end the life of President Nicolás Maduro. This would be the ninth action that we have publicly not only unveiled, but investigated or prosecuted. If we added to the four previous ones of the year 2023, which had one of the worst figures in the mortuary of La Viñera, that attempted the frustrated assassination against the President of the Republic and high authorities. The Attorney General of Venezuela stated that the fugitive from justice, Mario Cajaratu, confirmed that contacts were being made with groups of ex-military personnel in the United States to organize a coup movement. This March 30, just a few days ago, a fugitive from Venezuelan justice who has been issued an arrest warrant for the white bracelet conspiracy, Mario Ivan Cabratu Molina, said on X, formerly Twitter, that contacts were being made. He denounces it himself, unbelievable. Of course, he is all scared because he knows that we know. Then he makes a false step forward because he already knows that he is going to say. He said on X that contacts were being made with Venezuela military in the United States. These are his exact words. To organize a freedom movement within quotations, which is nothing more than an euphemism to refer to a putschist criminal and terrorist movement. In Peru, the Minister of the Interior and the Ministers of Education and Women's Affairs resigned from their posts in view of the investigation against the president of the country, Dina Boluarte, for alleged illicit enrichment. The Peruvian Minister of the Interior, Victor Torres, resigned on Monday amid the investigation that President Boluarte is facing due to some Rolex watches that she did not declare among her assets. In, her, in response to this, the minister alleged family problems for his resignation. 
In turn, the Minister of Women, Nancy Tolentino, also announced her resignation through a series of messages in her account on the social media X, while the head of the education portfolio, Miriam Ponce Vertiz, announced her retirement from the post through a statement without specifying her motives. In the Ecuadorian city of Guayaquil, authorities reported over 17 violent deaths during the Easter holiday. The Interior Ministry informed that this Sunday night several individuals opened fire against a group of people who were in the public road in the sector of L14. The crime left three people dead and three others wounded, while on Saturday night, criminal groups carried out a massacre in Guasmo, south of Guayaquil, leaving nine people dead and others injured. In this regard, the investigative unit began an operation to find the whereabouts of the perpetrators. In Haiti, on Monday, a deadly alliance of armed groups continued launching a series of coordinated attacks in the capital, Port-au-Prince, including near the National Palace. An identified policeman said in a voice note circulated on the WhatsApp messaging platform that at least four police officers were injured during the violent incidents. The officer declared that five of them were in a police armored vehicle when everyone except for him was shot. The four are reportedly being treated for gunshot wounds. In a video on social media, an armed man wearing a camouflage ski mask could be seen commandeering the armor vehicle as he created gang ISO 5 seconds for the attack. In the another video, the armor vehicle is engulfed in flames. Former U.S. President Donald Trump posted $175 million U.S. dollar bail on Monday as he appeals his conviction in a civil fraud case in New York. The case investigated by New York Attorney General Letitia James accused Trump, his adult children and his company of inflating assets for financial gain. Trump's lawyer's efforts got his bail amount cut nearly in half by a state appeal court and extended his deadline to 10 days to make the payment. Trump has faced numerous indictments, lawsuits, and countersuits, yet he continues to run as the Republican Party's presidential candidate. Let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English, where you will find news in different formats, news updates, and much more. Other stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back. In Palestine, a new Israeli airstrike killed seven workers of the Charity World Central Kitchen on Monday after the delivery of food and supplies to North Gaza. The Ministry of Health in Gaza reported that at the time of the attack, the martyrs were traveling in a vehicle on the sea road west of the city of Deir al-Bala. During the removal of the bodies, the authorities confirmed the nationality of the three of the seven dead, who were of Polish, British and Australian origin. In response to the attack, the Hamas movement reaffirmed in a statement that Israel still insists on its policy of systematic assassinations against civilians, humanitarian aid teams and international charities in order to promote terror among humanitarian workers so that they cannot carry out their mission. Palestinian authorities warned that the Office of the United Nations Middle East Organization for Palestinian Refugees, UNRWA, faces a financial crisis after Israeli accusations against that United Nations agency. The Department of Refugee Affairs of the Organization for the Liberation of Palestine warned about the crisis of the United Nations Public Works and Relief Agency for Palestinian Refugees in the Middle East. The agency warned that the funds available in UNRWA's budget cover the needs of Palestinians until the end of May. However, after this month, it will enter into a deficit in relation to its regular budget. Officials noted that at least 16 countries suspended their funding to the agency after Israel claimed that 12 of its employees were involved in Hamas operations without being able of, provi of proving these accusations. The Colombian government said it will join South Africa's court case against Israel's violations and urge other countries to do the same. 
In official statement issued on Monday, the Colombian government said that in order to cooperate with the lawsuit filed by South Africa against Israel at the International Court of Justice and to contribute in a tangible way to the defense of the Palestinian cause in the international judicial arena, the national government has decided to intervene in this process, invoking the mechanism provided for in Article 63 of the Statute of the Court. On the other hand, the statement also states that the Colombian government invites other signatory states of the 1948 convention to do the same, not only as a gesture of solidarity with Palestine in this tragic hour, but also as a rejection of the violations by Israel of this important treaty, which should not go unpunished. The document also highlights that the court recorded that the catastrophic living conditions of the Palestinian population in Gaza continue to deteriorate and noted that because of Israel's actions, residents of Gaza have been deprived of food and other basic necessities. The Israeli parliament passed a new, new law allowing the government to close foreign media companies considered a danger to the Tel Aviv regime. The approved laws give the executive the right to forbid broadcasting from Israel ter territory, close offices and websites and seize the equipment of foreign channels or radio stations that are considered hostile to the government. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu emphasized that he will take measures to prevent the Qatari media, Al Jazeera, from broadcasting from Israel since he is convinced that he was involved in the Al-Aqsa flood operation last October 7th. Netanyahu also accused Al Jazeera of allegedly inciting hostile actions against Israeli soldiers. The death toll from the Israeli attack on the Iranian consulate building in Damascus on Monday rose to seven, including two Iranian generals. According to a statement issued by Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Corps, Brigadier General Mohammed Reza Zahedi and his Deputy General Mohammad Hadi Hadimi were killed in the attack. Official reports informed that several buildings in the Iranian embassy were severely damaged, while the consulate building of the Persian nation was completely destroyed. Iranian government sources say the target of the Israeli airstrike was the residence of the Iranian ambassador Hussein Akbari, who warned that Tehran's response would be, in his words, decisive. On the other hand, Syrian Foreign Minister Faisal Magdar rejected the attack and expressed his support for the Palestinian people at the site of the Israeli strikes that destroyed the Iranian consulate in Damascus. Our people have grown used to responding to such cowardly attacks and to prove to humanity that these attacks can only be met with further steadfastness and further support for the Palestinian people and the resistance, whether in Iraq or southern Lebanon. In this context, Iran demanded a meeting of the UN Security Council to discuss matters related to the attack perpetrated by Israel on Sunday morning on the Iranian consulate in Syria. Iran's deputy representative to the UN, Sahra Rashid called the council to strongly condemn the Israeli act discriminated as a terrorist attack. Iran highlighted the need to address Israel's open violations of norms and principles of the international law and assured that Iran reserves its legitimate and inherent right to respond decisively to such terrorist acts. In Russia, Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zaharova condemned the attack perpetrated by Israel against the Iranian consulate in Damascus. In her Telegram account, Zaharova pointed out that any attack on diplomatic and consular buildings whose inviolability is guaranteed by the Vienna Conventions is unacceptable. She added that the attack was carried out in a densely populated metropolitan area which created a high risk of mass casualties among the civilian population. The spokeswoman also assured Israel's actions are unacceptable and they must be stopped. The Venezuelan government expresses solidarity with the Iranian people after the new attack committed by the Zionist regime against the Iranian diplomatic and consular headquarters in Damascus on his official ex account. Venezuela's foreign minister Ivan Hill also condemned the missile attack and called it another example of the irrationality of the Zionist regime, which has become the greatest source of instability in the region. He also extended the Venezuelan government and people's heartfelt condolences to the families and friends of the victims and wished a speedy recovery of the wounded. Cuba joined the rejection of the recent Israeli attack against the Iranian consulate in Syria. Through his account on the social media X, Foreign Minister Bruno Rodriguez wrote, 
We strongly condemn this Israeli attack against diplomatic officers of Iran in Damascus in flagrant violation of the sovereignty of Syria and international law. These unacceptable actions increase the risk of escalation and regionalization of the conflict with unpredictable consequences. In this context, Iranian citizens gather at Palestine Square in central Tehran to rally in rejection of the Israeli attack against the Iranian consulate in Damascus, chanting slogans and holding the Zionist regime responsible. Demonstrators also burned U.S. and Israeli flags at the strike. We have a fun short break coming up, but before we invite you to join our WhatsApp community for our English-speaking audience, you can scan the QR code on the screen to join directly and share the link to reach more people. Constant news coverage of Latin America and the Caribbean as well as the rest of the world. Stay connected and informed with Telesur. Found your break, don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. Approximately 27 explosive devices were seized while being transported from Ukraine to Russia via member states of the European Union. According to an official statement issued by the Russian Federal Security Service, officials of the Federal Customs Service dismantled a cross-border smuggling channel for explosive during the search of a vehicle at the Ublinka border crossing point on the Latvian-Russian border. 70 kilograms of high-powered plastic industrial explosive, 91 detonators and components of a portable anti-tank rocket launcher were taken from the vehicle. Azerbaijan accused Armenia of moving troops, armored vehicles and artillery on the border of both countries. The Azerbaijani Ministry of Defense stated that in view of the intensive movement of military troops in different directions on the common border, it will respond effectively to any provocation. Likewise, affirmed that the all responsibility for the worsening of the situation will fully fall on Armenia and its supporters. In this regard, the military entity reported an increase in the activities of Armenian troops during the last few days, but it qualifies as provocations aimed at increasing tensions. In Beijing, the governments of China and France agreed to establish strategies for more stable bilateral relationships. The conversation were led by Chinese Prime Minister Wang Yi and his French counterpart Stéphane Sejourne. The Chinese minister expressed his wish for Paris to provide a fair and non-discriminatory business environment for the Asian country. Both representatives pledged to promote mutual communication, coordination exchanges, and cooperation to build a reciprocal relationship of greater stability and strategic vision. In the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Cardinal Fridolin Ambongo, at his Mass for Catholic Easter, denounced the critical security situation that affects the country. The cleric assured that the country is sick, unarmed and defenseless in the face of violence, in particular that exhibited by militias in the north and east of the territory. In this context of violence, the rebel militias have killed 16 people in the area of Irumu only during the preparations for the Holy Week. This situation has caused half a million people to be forcibly displaced to the capital of North Kivu. The United Nations peacekeeping mission in the Democratic Republic of the Congo raises alarms over the unprecedented expansion of the rebel group Movement 23, known as M23. Minto Keita, the head of the mission, affirms that the deployment of the irregulars is exponentially aggravating the humanitarian crisis. She explains that since the December elections, the M23 has taken control of large areas of the territory. The Congolese government points out that the irregulars are supported by the Kenyan executive. They are currently in control of several access roads to Kivu, causing the displacement of more than one million people. The worsening of the crisis is linked to the war for minerals triggered by the interference of Western governments. The exhibition of the Forbidden City and the Versailles Palace opened on Monday in Beijing, China. The exhibition focuses on exchanges between France and China in the 17th and 18th centuries to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between the two countries. This exhibition features over 200 works mainly from the two museums' own collections and will provide a fresh perspective on a little-known story interweaving science, diplomacy and trade with the taste of a bygone era. 
know how one artistic creation and reveal how a symbiotic relationship between China and France heavily influenced art and design in the regions. The exhibition will be running from April 1st to June the 30th. Uh, Wan Yi, member of the political bureau of the Communist Party of China, Central Committee, and Minister of Foreign Affairs and the French Minister of Foreign Affairs, Stéphane de Sajourne, were present at the exhibition which aims to reaffirm and strengthen the bilateral ties between the two nations. We have come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at telesolenglish.net. You can also join us on our social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. For Telesol English, I'm Luis Alberto Matos. Thank you for watching.